dogs that became a political scandal. Last summer, animal rights campaigners chartered a plane to transport vets and animals to the UK from Kabul, but only the animals made it out, and the plane left without the Afghans, despite having 229 empty seats. Now this programme has learned some of those who say they were meant to be on that flight still remain stranded and feel abandoned. Basma Manju reports. August 2021. The desperation of Afghans trying to get out was witnessed by the world in heartbreaking scenes at Kabul airport. Amid this chaos, a political row over whether a plane transporting dogs and cats was being prioritised. I can't park people in the cargo hold, but I can park my animals in that cargo hold. But there were people also expecting to be on that evacuation plane who didn't make it. And some of them are now refugees in limbo. How did you feel when you saw that plane leaving and your family were meant to be on it? It was devastating. It was very emotional because um, all my family, they had their shoes on to leave the, the house to go to the airport, but obviously they couldn't. Asia Jafri says her two sisters and their families were on the list for evacuation on the plane pen farthing and animal rights campaigners had chartered. I think we're almost here. As well as the cats and dogs, they wanted to evacuate vets, those working in security and their families. It was undoubtedly controversial and has continued as a subject of political debate. Did you authorise evacuating animals out of Kabul over there? No, that is absolutely, this whole thing is, is, is total rhubarb. But what about those left behind? Really? Yeah, I know. Hopefully, soon. You've been so brave and patient. Although Penn Farthing managed to get his staff to Britain at a later date, others expecting to be on that plane haven't made it. Asia's family knew they would be targets for the Taliban because not only are they Shia minorities, they're also associated with British organisations. So they embarked on a dangerous journey over the land border to Pakistan and now they're stuck there. Does it feel like the UK government has sort of abandoned their responsibility to, to people like your family? I mean, at least for these people who, ha who were in the list and they were aware of them and they might be aware of them now, knowing all the situation and the political situation. So why they're just trying to ignore them? And it is heartbreaking to see that um, Afghan refugees are forgotten. Dominic Dyer was one of the key campaigners around this operation. He's always insisted the Prime Minister himself authorised the evacuation of animals from Afghanistan. That could only happen if the Prime Minister had engaged in the process and made it clear. And he showed us his email and WhatsApp exchanges with the PM's Parliamentary Private Secretary at the time, Trudy Harrison. The Transport Minister, the Environment Minister, you know, so she's talking about elements of this coming together, which was so crucial in landing an aeroplane full of dogs and cats into Heathrow Airport. Now he alleges the government is ignoring the Afghans left behind because of the political row. I think it's largely a policy of forgetting everyone when it comes to Afghanistan, but also I think some of it has got caught up in the fallout politically about the Nauzad rescue operations, and it's become a bit of a political football. I'm really grateful for the Prime Minister's intervention, but he hasn't embraced it and he hasn't been honest about his involvement. And what you're suggesting is the collateral damage in all this are the people who are now left behind. Absolutely. We put these claims to Downing Street. In a statement, they told us the Prime Minister had no role in authorising individual evacuations from Afghanistan, including Nozad staff and animals. At no point did the Prime Minister instruct staff to take any particular course of action on Nozad. They also say Trudy Harrison was acting in her role as a constituency MP, and the PM did not ask her to intervene. The group of Afghans who remain stuck in Pakistan are working hard to improve their English. Although they've escaped immediate danger, the children are unable to go to school, the adults, some of whom are qualified vets, are unable to work. Asiya says she'll continue her efforts to try and get her family to the UK, but so far she feels no one is listening. I love you. <laughs> 
ਬਾਰੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਵਾ